Uh, call the meeting to order. Everyone, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Flag. Flag. United States of America. Uh, first order of business. Uh, Commissioner Edmonds, do we have any opening comments I'd like to share? Very short tonight. Um, welcome everyone, thank you for joining us. We're all in this together. Just a reminder, only questions or statements regarding an agenda item will be en entertained under citizens to be heard at the top of the meeting. All other matters will be recognized during public comment at the end of the meeting. Zoning update. The Board of Commissioners held another public workshop last week, and we're getting closer to our goals of a new zoning plan that works for our residents both now and 10 years from now. One that defines a vision for Lincoln Highway and serves as an invitation for businesses to utilize the opportunities presented through LERTA. One that allows for smart development without overdevelopment. The biggest lift has been Lincoln Highway, and at this point, we've fleshed out most of it from permitted uses to design standards, bulk requirements, streetscapes, and landscape requirements. Our next public workshop will be uh, next, no, two weeks from now, March 23rd, before the uh, commissioner's meeting. Hey, I, things are happening. What's that? Are we doing the 16th? Are, are we scheduled for the 16th for the Z is it the no. 23rd? 23rd, yeah. Okay, I, I have something else on the 6th. I'm sorry. Things are ha starting to shake on Lincoln Highway. The farmhouse will be coming before the Planning Commission in April. Very exciting that this highly successful small business chose Cowan for their second location and that they're close to being ready to come to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, I understand that Jefferson's Family Market, right next door to the proposed farmhouse location, are also close to presenting. Exciting times ahead. Not all good news. We served notice, uh, received notice from the Rotary Club that due to staffing and security concerns, there will be no Strawberry Festival this year. It's sad to lose an attraction that draws people to Cowan, but safety is the most important ingredient of any public gathering, and uh, these are trying times for sure. Uh, I'm sure Ms. Denny will have more on this in her report. I know there's a page too. There you go. March 25th and 26th are Cowan Cleanup Weekend. Uh, please check the township website to sign up. And finally, spread kindness, everyone. Grudges and resentments are not worth our time. Compassion, empathy, peace, and love. These are the greatest gifts any of us can give or receive. Well said. Thank you, Mark. All right, next on the agenda, we have uh, citizens to be heard. I will reach out to the uh, public here at the township building. It does not seem uh, we have any comments at this time. How about the Zoom world? Any hands raised? Not at this time. All right, moving on. We have township solicitor, Miss Camp. I believe you're online. I am. Hi, good night. Good evening, everybody. Not good night yet. Kristen. <laughs> Sorry. That was quick. <laughs> So Ray's on as well. This was an, an initiative and an ordinance amendment that Ray had requested as the director of building and life safety. Um, you have a chapter 85 in the town code that deals with fire protection equipment and he does commercial fire inspections. But when reviewing this chapter of the code realized that much of it's outdated and needed to be brought up to current uh, references, current standards. Um, also making sure that it, the person that's administering this, the proper title is in the ordinance. It's the director of building and life safety instead of the chief of the Thorndale Fire Company. Um, there's also different organizations that the national standards are governed by that those names have changed. And then most importantly, in the commercial inspections, they're also reviewing that make sure that life safety equipment, exit signage, emergency lighting, that is all done and made sure that it's uh, compliant with this chapter of the code before they can get a commercial, uh, pass a commercial inspection. So all we did was update chapter 85 of your code. We did advertise this tonight in the Daily Local on March 1st, and we sent a copy of the ordinance to the law library and the Daily Local on February 24th. 
I believe we reviewed this with you at your last meeting, but again, we're both here to answer any questions that you have. All right, uh, Chris and Ray, thank you so much for putting all, all the time in into this. Uh, commissioners, any questions on it? Mm -hmm. All right, and from the commissioners, uh, from residents here at the township building, any questions? About Zoom World. Is, it has been properly advertised, so I will entertain a motion to approve uh, Ordinance 2023-03, amending amending Chapter 85. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion's good, 4-0. So that's Chris. all I have. All right. Oh, well, enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll Thank be here you. if you want to hang out. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ray. All right. Next on the agenda, we have the township engineer. Carl. Good evening. Carl yeah. Schmidt with Arrow. Welcome. Thank you. Well, we have uh, two items on the agenda as work rolls along. They're both pay applications uh, requesting uh, your consideration. <clears throat> The first one is a request for pay application number two for Brightfields in the amount of $34,592.30. This is uh, in uh, reference to the uh, golf course pump house demolition. Uh, this second payment brings the uh, total up to approximately 63% expended uh, projects near completion. So we expect uh, just another pay app after this. Commissioners, any questions on this? And this was funded by a, uh, a grant, if I recall. Uh, an insurance reimbursement. Insurance, I'm sorry. Yeah. No questions, any questions from uh, residents? None here in the building, none in Zoom world. All right. Entertain a motion to uh, approve, approve um, payment to Brightfields in the amount of Thirty-four thousand five hundred ninety-two dollars and thirty cents. So moved. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Which is good. Four zero. Next. Thank you. Uh, next one is the pay application number one. Uh, it is for uh, construction master services. This is in relation to the Moore Road Bridge uh, replacement. Uh, this pay application number one is in the amount of $137,295. This is for work through the end of February. And this um, basically equates to maybe 25% of the uh, total budget expended. Right. Commissioners, any questions? Question, um, what was the total amount of that repair? For Moore Road, the total budget was five hundred sixty-seven thousand four hundred eighty-nine. Okay. That's not even half of the total budget. And, and is this set up to go quarterly payments? Uh, uh, they're probably going to do monthly uh, pay applications. Um, work is uh, once they start, they progress through right till the end. Okay. So we'll this see is a lot coming of from bond proceeds project that we would be submitting the payment to reimburse. Okay. All right. All right. Any other questions from commissioners? Any questions from residents? None at this time. I'll entertain a motion to approve uh, the payment for application number one in the amount of $137,295. Uh, for the construction master of services. Second. So moved. All right. Second. Moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Tindera. Tindera. Oh, it was Tindera. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. D Thanks. Denise, did you catch that? Lorraine. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. 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 <clears throat> I think that was four zero. All right. Very good. Thank you. That was the end of the agenda. All right. Thank you, Carl. Thanks so much, Carl. Right, next on the agenda, we have Township Manager, Ms. Denny. Yes, the first thing under um, my report on the agenda is a re request for consideration to approve 
a quote from Seal Master, a CoStar vendor, in the amount of $22,982.14 for Municipal Park Tennis Court improvements. Um, I have to give credit to Abby Swan on, on this one and the Recreation Committee. Um, they have been working on that and evaluating our facilities, facilities that need updates for, for both wear and tear and safety reasons. Um, Abby has worked with the vendor to have the courts be repaved and painted in a way that they can be used both for tennis and pickleball. Mm -hmm. Um, so pickleball is 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 really lifting off um, for those of us that are members at the Y. Um, there is pickleball leagues now and pickleball clinics, um, and and it is something that is growing. Um, mm -hmm. So we want to be able to add that amenity, um, but this was budgeted as a part of the recreation budget for this year. Nice. I know uh, our, our old commissioner John Contento. He enjoyed pickleball. He. Uh, <laughs> Championed yeah. it. Mm -hmm. I he he did. I, I, uh, Mr. Mullen and I discussed this afternoon. Um, th this was one thing he really, really was trying to work to get into Callan Township. He was actually one of, uh, I mean, he was a medal winner in the Senior Olympics in the Pickleball League. So he, he was very passionate about pickleball, and he would be very happy to see this getting put in right now. Tony, are we, are we going to see you out there on the pickleball court? No. <laughs> Glad you're not on the mic. Maybe if I have to do some type of memorial there in his name. I mean, I mean that was before people even heard about pickleball. Yeah. And, oh, I mean, he was. He, and he you was, say pickleball, they're like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now it's like you said, it's, it's, it's very hot and a lot mm -hmm. of the leagues are being formed around the country. And they don't hear much about tennis as much as you do pickleball. Mm -hmm. It will definitely get used. That's for sure. Yep. Yeah. First time I tried it was on a cruise ship. Yeah. It, it's it's fun. It really <laughs> is. All right, uh, commissioners. Any questions on this? I just suppose the funds will come from open space <clears throat> or. No, we actually put this directly into the general fund budget under projects. Okay, so it was already there. It was already budgeted. Excellent. Excellent. And Kristen, will this get done before summer? Um, is, is that I'm not sure. I, I bet it will be very close to. Okay. Yeah, it just depends how quick the vendor can get out here. We, we've kind of been, you know, we've had the quote for a while. It, it's just a matter of us putting it through. Hopefully we can get it done before summer. Yeah. All right. Any questions from uh, residents? Any in the Zoom world? None at this time? I keep saying this is the year that start playing tennis again and my wife keeps saying you should just go out back and play badminton <laughs> settle for pickleball <laughs> all right entertain a motion to uh so moved yep there you go so moved second moved by commissioner evans second by commissioner kennedy all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. she's good four zero second item so the next item on our agenda um, commissioner young had reached out to me that there was a resident from downing town that was interested in trying to apply for some grant funding uh, for projects or possible foundation money for victims of floods or to put together a nonprofit in the future to benefit people mm -hmm. that are victims of natural disasters um, I reviewed that material this afternoon. I've had several phone calls with the individual that's doing this. Um, I, it, it's my recommendation. It's not a bad idea. It's never a bad idea to throw our hat in for any money we can get for projects. Um, and we, we definitely should do that. I think that the nonprofit slash foundation that he is proposing is something that is better, better left to the public and private sector and not a governmental agency. Um, it, it, you know, there, there, some of the things that are being proposed would be redundant because the county already fills many of those functions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, are, it, it, I just think that it could lead to potential conflicts of interest if government is saying who we should be giving funding to, to private individuals. Mm -hmm. I, I think that could be problematic. That's not saying anybody on the board that wishes to be a part of this nonprofit or contribute to the nonprofit or anything to that effect 
there, there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I don't know if we want to get into a situation where sitting board members are making decisions between if Callan Township residents or Downingtown residents right. or East Callan residents get specific funding. And mm -hmm. some of it is very subjective. It, it is um, mm -hmm. not clear cut of how these, these funds would be distributed or, or found. It's, it, I, I'm, I'm never really a fan of those types of nonprofits because I think that there are enough entities out there and enough foundations that if somebody wanted to make a gift of $100,000 to help people that were flood victims, between the United Way, the Red Cross, um, what was the former Brandywine Foundation, the Chester County Foundation, there's enough ways that those things can be distributed. So I, I don't know. And, you know, the thing is, if, if there's no natural disasters, who's overseeing those funds? So there, there's a lot of what ifs. And I just don't think it is necessarily something that is a good thing for government to be a part of. You know, that's not government's it, function. Is that what he was asking? I, I haven't Yeah, he, to two it. parts. Okay. Two parts. He wanted potential projects that we needed done to prevent future flooding, which which we do. And I, I think that it would be a good idea, like I said, anytime we can throw our hat in the rain to, you know, get potential funding, we should absolutely do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that portion of it is a good thing. And I think we should participate in that. I just don't know, as a government entity, we we shouldn't necessarily be tipping our toes into nonprofit foundation funding. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's just a lot that can. Is that double dipping? <laughs> that, that was... Well, it, 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 it I, I will say, Lace, I, it could lead to a lot of conflicts of interest. That's that's the best way to put is it. Is he looking more towards like a, a cog? No, it's not a cog. It would okay. be a nonprofit. Mm -hmm that would hold on to funds for the purpose of giving those funds to people if they're the way that the charter is proposing is a natural or civil disaster. Mm -hmm. And again, nothing wrong with any of that. Mm -hmm. I, it's just not a government. It's just how, how it's decided. Right? And, Who and, would and it's, be it's not a, a function decision. of government is, is the point. So, you know, my concern is, is if we signed on, would they be expecting a contribution on a yearly basis that that we give out and again and that's, that's that's not that's what a government, conflict right there it, 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 bingo <laughs> i mean it, it's so there there's yeah. there's a, a very well intended all, all of those things are very well intended and again if mm -hmm. anybody as private citizens wants to participate that's more than fine mm -hmm. i i just don't think it's ever you know when it comes down to it and we have to make decisions on things. We have to do it for the benefit of the community, not for the benefit of an individual. And and um, there there's just a, a lot that can become conflicts of interest mm -hmm. is, is my concern. Um, and again, that's not government's role. And and that is so I, I if, if the board was and I know Mr. Young isn't here tonight and he kind of passed this on to me. I think that we participate in this for the the possibility of projects but not for this nonprofit because another thing that they're trying to to do in this paperwork was that he wanted to do emergency management on a three community basis well we already do emergency management on a county basis mm -hmm. so there there was a lot of redundancy that you know wouldn't make sense because we're not you know when we plan we look at how things affect East Brandywine, West Bradford, Coatesville, Downingtown. Mm -hmm. We're not just going to look at us three. And and that's what the county does. The county oversees the entire emergency management for our entire county. So so there's has, things. Has he presented it to the county? I have no I, I don't know that. Okay. I, he, I don't. It's just starting out with Downingtown? I, he East No, Brad he wants it to be the three, East Callan, Callan, okay. and Downingtown. Um mm -hmm. Again, no, nothing wrong with any private citizens being involved in that. Any mm -hmm. that's more than fine, but for our purposes, um, it 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 doesn't necessarily serve our government purposes. Other than to say, yes, we have projects that we need done. If you can find grant funding for it, we're more than willing to participate. Your your concerns make a lot of sense, um, and I'll, in the end, I'll most probably agree with everything. <laughs> I got these really late in the day, and I like to mm -hmm. 
I have no life, so I like to read everything. <laughs> uh-huh. Is it possible that we table this until the next meeting? That, and I, that that's gives fine. us all time to look yeah, at it. Yep. And Josh Young is back then. And mm-hmm. um, yep, that's and again, that's yeah. it's a discussion item, and I'll I'll let him know that it's tabled until the next you know okay. next agenda. So that's not a big deal. That's more than fine. But you know, yeah. I, I I think that's where we need to think. When I I read a lot of the descriptions of the nonprofit, there was just already a lot of redundancy. Mm-hmm. And, and that was more my I, concern. I would be concerned of the conflict of interest, which mm-hmm. we, we've already established. Uh, right. But and, yeah. And, and, you know, what you don't want is essentially, you know, and, and unfortunately we've known what an emergency response has been, you know, just because of, of recent activities. We had a very good response in that initial time with the county plans, with the Red Cross, with the United Way, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't want those trampled on. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a lot of those systems have already been put in place. So we, you know, I, I just, I just, again, the nonprofit world mm-hmm. needs to, to stay where that is, but that's, that's all that is. But I'm, I'm, I'm with so, Mark. I haven't had a chance to yeah, fully and, read it. So, uh, yeah, you know, and, if there's and, something that we can benefit out of this. Yeah. Uh, I think project wise. Yes, absolutely. We should, you know, move forward project wise, but mm-hmm. um, you know, all I'm those good. things. Um, Mr. Evans had brought up about the Strawberry Festival. I obviously sent a email to the board. Um, you know, we are sad to see it go. It's, um, you know, after many years, the Brandywine Foundation had decided not to move forward with it. The Rotary tried to bring it back. I think they tried really hard. Mm. Um, you know, they then got hit with COVID-19. There was years of, of you know, three years that it was off then and trying to get back the vendors and the volunteers and everything that's needed to make it a go just isn't there anymore, unfortunately. Um, You know, Tower Health closing is another thing that that because for approximately three weeks, the people that were the former Brandywine Hospital were pretty much working, setting up and and getting the electrical set up and every the infrastructure set up to make the event happen. You know, that's another cost they're now having to pay for. Um, you know, the fire department, unfortunately, they just don't have the volunteers to be able to do a four day event. Um, you know, and for all of us sitting here, you know, everybody in this room is, is very active in, in the public. And I think we could all say, we can all give an afternoon. It's very hard for anybody to give four full days, especially in the summer. Um, you know, especially if you have kids, it's just difficult. Um, you know, they also were not able to find a security firm that could cover at a cost they could afford. The one quote that they had received was for $100,000 um, and they had only budgeted $20,000 for security, um, which over four days, you know, hmm. that that's not a lot of, a, it's a very unrealistic sum. Um, you know, as far as our police force covering it in full, again, you know, every police department and probably all of Chester County is suffering, and even the sheriff's department is suffering trying to attract police officers. Um, we've talked about it before, and the chief talked about when he applied for the state police, there were 10,000 applicants that year. State police are only getting 1,000 applicants. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it is drastic. We could go to our neighbors. They are able to give a day, but nobody can take people out of their police force for four days um you know again summer height of summer vacations um -hmm. you can only burn your people out so much Hmm. i mean mean, and that's that's really what it it comes down to um so for a lot of reasons it's just not a sustainable Mm -hmm. event anymore um and you know we're sad to see that go you know but the Rotary did. They really tried. They they planned. They worked. They tried very hard. It was by none of their own failing. It's just society has changed, mm-hmm. um, and the needs for the event have changed, and the partners that used to be there are no longer there. It is it is a shame, but I I will <laughs> say I always look forward to watching the fireworks. All I had to do is stand out in the middle of my street <laughs> because <laughs> I I could just see yeah. it from there. It was it was beautiful. We always enjoyed it. And I know the kids, you know, way back when, you know, when they were in high school, they they enjoyed it. So it'll, it'll be a shame. 
come up with something yeah, new. I, you know, Chris and I were talking about it today, and, and she even mentioned originally it started out with what? Just strawberry, you know, shortcake or? And cra it was like a strawberry yeah, shortcake a craft. and craft show. And yeah. it was just kind of the afternoon or the weekend. And then it yeah. turned, that's exactly and it turns it into a carnival and, and it gets out of hand. Yep. You can go down to Wildwood for that. Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> But who knows? Hey, if, if somebody wants to get back to the old uh, the old way of doing it, there you go. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that update. Right, well, let me ask any questions from residents. What we brought up and from the Zoom world. Next on the agenda, which ones did we already do? We did the. One is completed. Yeah. yeah. One and two. Um, I uh, know two is the schedule of fees. That's table. No, the schedule of fees, they were t tabled from last meeting. And oh, I need a motion to untable. Am I getting a motion to untable the schedule of fees so we can vote on it? Is this the joint project with yeah. Banning Tambara? No, no. No, we tabled that. Yeah, that one's yeah. table. Okay. Number, I'm on number two. Request for consideration for adoption. Okay. Yeah, the adoption of uh, the 2023 schedule of fees for our uh, engineer and uh, solicitor and uh, consultants, basically. I uh, move that we untable. Moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Kennedy. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Resolution has been untabled. Uh, so I will entertain a motion. Oh, oh uh, Ms. Denny, let me just ask you this just to confirm the reason why we tabled it is you wanted to re I wanted a little more time review. to com compare um, the rates from last year and, mm -hmm. and what had increased. Um, you know, the, these fees are the fees that are, are paid primarily by developers uh, for reviews. I could say, you know, that the increases were within a five to ten dollar range which is yeah, fair were. in this economy mm -hmm. and and i know in the past that most of these folks have either kept it the same for several years so through COVID, i think they did <laughs> absolutely yeah right. it was a very low percent across the board i was prepared for this at the last meeting and, and i uh, did not uh, look at it for this one i apologize yeah up two dollars up two dollars As you said, most of these are absorbed by the developers, correct? Correct. Any questions from commissioners? Any questions from residents? None at this time. All right. Entertain a motion to uh, adopt resolution 2023-07 for the 2023 schedule of fees for our consultants. So moved. Second. <laughs> Moved by Commissioner Evans, second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Which is good for zero. Moving right along. The finance department. We have a check run to consider. Check run forty-nine thousand seven hundred and eighteen to forty-nine thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven with a manual check of two eighty-eight. That's just one check, number 288. <laughs> no questions? I have a motion. Do I have a second? So moved. A second. I move by Commissioner Tendera, second by Commissioner Evans. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion's good, 4 0. Yeah, I don't have any circles. I'm, I'm just double checking. Yeah. yeah. Just to make sure. All right, next uh, we have minutes to approve February 23rd, Board of Commissioner minutes. Any uh, changes, additions, corrections? Uh, no. Um, I, I did have one thing. I just wanted to make sure it's okay to uh, add to the minutes. Uh, at the page 60, mm -hmm. 
on of our packet, Denise? Number six. The conversation, Mr. Ward, Chris Ward, uh, our past Ingleside Golf Manager had noted he gave two weeks notice to the township. Thank you. And this will be his last meeting. He thanked the board and everyone that has worked with, uh, he has worked with throughout the years uh, that he's been employed. I'm almost sure we thanked him for his service, and I would like that in the yes. record. The <laughs> board thanked Chris for his years of service and dedication to our township and the golf course. I don't know how, you know, and I think we all had said something at that meeting, but however you want to, you know, revise I that. I just, I'm thinking to myself, yeah. 10 years from now, somebody's going to read this. Oh, they didn't even thank him for, you know. <laughs> 15 years of I service or hit you no we all we all <laughs> had something because look you know it was under his his time here that that thing turned around yes so yeah, uh, yes. did a good job all right so uh miss danny what's the best way to do that um just either that's, just that's it okay uh, denise you have that denise, she'll add it to the minutes okay i didn't know if she needed to you know, re-listen or anything okay all right uh with that change any other changes Commissioners. Okay. Well, with that change, I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Kennedy. Second by Commissioner Tendero. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Approved. Uh, four zero. Next, we have uh, acknowledgement of the Planning Commission uh, minutes from January fifteenth. Seventeenth <clears throat> or fifteenth? This is January. Yeah, actually, yeah, the uh, the minutes say January 15th, but on the for sheet. Documents the 17th. 17th. So, uh, for the January 17th meeting. Yeah. Not that we can change anything, but uh, I will entertain a motion to acknowledge. Move. So moved. Second. And moved by Commissioner Kennedy, or, or Tendero, second by Commissioner Evans. All in favor? <clears throat> say aye. 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 Motion is good for zero. Uh, yes, uh, we have a question. Tony, come on up to the uh, podium. Mr. Desario. Pickleball. Okay. It's walking on all those trails. Mine was, mine was with the uh, finance department because we didn't ask the residents if they were getting wet. Oh, okay. I just wondered, what's uh, the manual check 288? What is it for? Got it earlier. I believe that was uh, running it. Uh, so S and T Bank, Montgomery County Community College. Yeah, that was for tuition for one of the police cadets. Okay. Which I, we're we're reimbursed uh, a portion of that. We are, but we have to pay the the academy directly. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Eleven thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Yep. Thank you, Tony. Moving on. Okay. Uh, park and Rec. This wow, is it's been a while. Meat and potatoes of our meeting. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's that time of the year again. It's spring, and the Park and Rec Commission uh, Recreation Committee has been busy planning events and activity for this year for the community. Um, We'll be starting out with our, our annual cleanup day, which will be held March the 25th and the 26th. And the reason why we decided to do the weekend instead of just assigning it to a day is because it gives more flexibility, you know, for people's work schedules. You know, if you just say we're going to do it Saturday at 10 o'clock, that, that creates a problem for people. So all weekend, you know, different <clears throat> groups and committees, the uh, Girl Scouts and a lot of volunteers, including myself and others on the board, um, we'll be working around the township, you know, to participate in assigned areas by uh, Abby. Uh, she's a great organizer and she's been doing this many years. Um, we have nice stickers made and then said I volunteered for Cowan Township Cleanup and they're very nice. And the children love stickers. We're also gonna like sponsor our volunteers with lunch at uh, the Midway. That worked out great, you know, with COVID and everything. We used to all come out and, you know, have the grills on and 
fellowship with each other. But, um, you know, this way, again, people can at their leisure, take their lunch coupon to the Midway and uh, enjoy uh, hot dogs. And so that, that works out nice. So we generally give everybody uh, a little nice coupon to uh, have lunch at the Midway when they're finished cleaning up with the groups or maybe some other time during the week when they have time. So that works out pretty good. Um, also coming up is our annual Easter egg hunt. Uh, so all the families that are listening, uh, get the little ones ready and excited on April the 8th, we will have our annual Easter egg hunt. We don't have a rain date scheduled, so let's hope for good weather. Um, there's a lot going on. Huh? Yeah. Uh, also, um, you know, we were trying to get our bus trips back up and running this year. Um, wanted to see how our residents felt about, you know, starting to get out again and get involved in some of the many events that, you know, we promoted over the years, and it was great. Um, unfortunately for craft bus company, a lot of their buses are already booked for the whole summer. So Abby is looking at other bus companies and then we'll put out another survey just to see how many residents are really interested in like, let's getting back on board again and taking some local trips. Uh, I know we used to go to New York and down to the Cherry Blossom Festival and maybe even the night at the ball game. But you know, these are things that we're gonna try to, you know, bring back into uh, our event schedule this year. Also, we already heard a report about the tennis courts. They're going to be upgraded. We approved it tonight, so that's great. So we can get back uh, with our vendors to see that if we can get on schedule and get this done so we can enjoy it and have the residents uh, playing pickleball all summer long. We'll probably have to hand out tickets to get on the courts. <laughs> you know, so that we're looking forward to that. We're also beginning to... Uh, brainstorm and look for ideas. So if you have any ideas that you want to share for this year's National Night Out with Chico's Vibe, possibly fireworks. And, and again, all of this is designed, you know, to just keep unity in our community. And we're also beginning to look at Community Day. I mean, that's a big event and it's not too soon to start thinking about that. So that's on our agenda as well. Um, well, there's a lot going on. We're with spring, you know, springing forward, um, looking at our tree maintenance day. That'll be coming up on April 22nd. You'll hear more about that. Uh, the Meadows Workshop, I think that's also scheduled for May. <clears throat> if everybody remembered, we did do a big meadow right here behind the backfield last year. I understand uh, Abby has a grant for another $600 so we can buy more seeds. And we're looking at doing a triangle shape uh, meadow this year and that should be really nice so looking forward to that we're working on our summer movie series we'll, we'll be putting that out to get some ideas of what families would like to see so if you have any ideas or suggestions for movies for this summer series we'll be well you know happy to hear that as well we want to keep that going um we got a big event coming up with our historical uh Com society and commission on july 20th you want to write that down if you're not away and vacationing. We'll be on the Chester County uh, Town Tour Guide, and we'll be able to uh, feature um, and let everybody come by and and see the farm and enjoy it. And it's a, just a delightful place. And if you haven't been out, it's back when farm is the place to be. So you want to see it in its present day. You want to see what the what future plans the society has for Spackman Farm. And it's just an honor to be on that tour. And uh, I've experienced that. And it's a great way to let people know the gems that we hide and treasure in Callan Township. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Got you. me all pumped up now. Yeah. How much going on? <laughs> Probably more than what I even said. Spring is here. Spring is in the air. <laughs> Good question. Are, are you doing, uh, Parks and Rec doing an Arbor Day? Did I hear something about that? I don't know 28. if it's. I, I didn't see that. Um, I just know a tree maintenance day. Okay, and that's the so 22nd. That's, so that's on the 22nd. Gotcha. Yeah. We're going to find a way to help you with that. Okay. Working together. So we got a lot going on. All right, Jane. It's exciting. What, you're, up, uh, you're up next. We have COG. Oh, my goodness. Any updates on that? Oh, I guess so lucky. Now, now COG. It's been a while since uh, I had a report on COG. Um, the last time we, we met, it was for all Christmas. It's almost Christmas again. Anyway, and we just ended the year with a nice dinner and fellowship and just kind of just brainstormed <clears throat> about ideas to 
get other municipalities involved. I mean, it's under reconstruction in a way because it's under new management. So it's a little different from the original COG couple, two years ago when I first joined. So, you know, when the chain of command, new president, new ideas, new structures. So it's, it's different, but I think it's going to be okay. A little different. <laughs> anyway, so what COG is interested in doing now is initiate a scholarship. They like to uh, present an opportunity uh, for students in our community to be able to apply for a $2,000 scholarship for any student that might be interested in pursuing um, their further their education in the area of government. And that could be business. I, I don't think they're going to keep it so broad that, you know, they don't get enough interest, but generally in government would be the idea recipient. And they're also interested in uh, initiating a junior COG organization. So, you know, all these ideas are great. You know, it takes a lot. A lot of people are just starting to really come out again. And, you know, we're still in a, a situation where a lot of people are still being affected with COVID. So a lot of people are reluctant. So we're not getting a lot of people out. So it's great that we can still do it hybrid because otherwise we probably wouldn't have anyone. So if you know any students or kids, I know we even talked about even in our municipalities, you know, I, I didn't ever uh, see the opportunity here where we had a junior council meeting, you know, kids that are interested in government or learning about municipal government to come into, you know, our organization as well. Because they're talking about on a COG level, but we're, I think even before they get the COG, if they could just come into, um, our organization and we could formulate you know a uh, youth group to teach them about local government i mean they are our future i'm sure they're very much interested in the process and you know what really goes on behind the scenes so that's something we can take into consideration um we also had a presentation by um <clears throat> a gentleman by the name of mr Jal i hope i'm pronouncing his name jaloski he was from mt bank and what he did, he gave a presentation and we get lots of presentations under this new uh, mandate and the new president um, bringing outside resources in to help us to share information, you know, in our different municipalities and governments. And his presentation was about cybersecurity. And I guess his main points were like, you know, how can we better protect uh, our bank accounts from like check washing and from cyber attacks and these type of things. And, you know, do we really have that type of security and how could we limit, you know, these type of things from happening within our own infrastructure? I mean, it was pretty interesting. We, we don't think about these type of things, but they're happening all the time. So, and I think I did talk to Ms. Swan about it one time, you know, do we have the extra security? Do we have the extra, and like with most banks, you do have insurance. You know, but what can, is there anything else we can do to protect, you know, cybersecurity within our own municipality and, and mm -hmm. our own way that we handle checks and the way that we conduct business? So it was interesting. He was from M&T Bank. Um, outside of that, there was not too much going on. Um, everybody, again, you know, is working and we go around the table and every different government and municipality gets opportunity to share. So what's going on in your backyard? And many of us, again, are working on in the same fabric and the community. Uh, everybody's still dealing with a lot of the stress and the un discomforts with um, the ABL and the LBS and making sure that they get the services for their community, for their residents. That's a big issue in a lot of communities. And um Coatesville, they're just fired up right now because they just got their contract with Washington Host canceled. So they're all over the place. And, you know, we, we heard a little bit about that. Um, so that's where we are with COG. And like I said, it's developing. It's new. You know, we'll, you'll probably hear more about the animal control. They're just not going to let that die. I, I don't know where it's going, but they're not letting it go. So hopefully next time we meet, we'll find out what direction that's moving in. Thank you. Great information. Thank you, Jane. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, municipal authority. Be myself. Uh, at the February meeting, uh, the board uh, authorized staff to forward <coughs> the uh, 2022 Chapter 94 annual report 
uh, to DARA and PAWC so it can be included in their final report to DEP. Um, also, uh, the board approved the Sanitary Sewer Capacity Reservation Agreement and the O&M Agreement for the duplex grinder pump systems for the uh, 5033 Horseshoe Pike project. That's the old vet on Horseshoe Pike that's uh, uh, optometrist. optometrist. That's moving in. Ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologist. Right. Eye doctor. I'm going to go with eye doctor. Makes <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, also, uh, we approved the crease trap operation O&M agreement for the proposed uh, Chipotle and the Starbucks Cafe in the Lomax site. Um, Next, is that supposed to take care? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure as far as that. Uh, we also adopted uh, resolution 2023-1, uh, accept, accepting dedication of the sanitary sewer lines that were installed as part of the Taco Bell project. And as far as the I and I program. Mm -hmm. See, we have uh, with standard pipe services for the 2023 count interceptor phase five repair contract. Uh, this project will involve the cleaning, televising, grouting for approximately 3,300 linear feet of the 24 inch diameter gravity sewer line and also testing and grouting for about 1,500 linear feet of the eight inch sanitary sewer lines. I think this is our last section of, of our interceptor and then we move on to uh, the what we call the tributaries coming into the interceptor so it's a uh, it's definitely seen a, a savings in our um, flows which is uh, helping out our cost okay next uh, we have Dara for the future expansion uh, George Chambers is our member for Dara uh, so between him and Scott Gill who runs our op uh, sewer department uh, they gave me the update for this uh, Dara stated that all members, municipalities, member municipalities continue finalizing their Act 537 plans. Dara also stated that the NTEC engineers should have an updated conceptual expansion plan to review with Dara prior to their next meeting. It says in February, but I guess that already happened. All right. uh, and also, uh, uh, Downing Town, Dara finished working cleaning and grouting of the 42 inch segment of Downingtown's interceptor, which uh, they're pretty much doing the same thing that we've we've been doing with our interceptor, uh, just grouting, cleaning it up, uh, which has shown a huge savings for them as well. <clears throat> so, just in layman's term, it's we're preventing rainwater getting into our pipe and just spending money to treat rainwater. All right, and that is the update for Dara. Next, we have the fire board take that one all yours <laughs> all right uh we have not met since february or the beginning of february uh which i think we spoke about at uh, the february's meeting uh, but our next meeting is on march 16th next week and we have received the 2022 audit from the fire board uh, i will be meeting with staff uh Kristen and ray uh to uh, discuss the audit prior to next week's meeting that uh, that is incredible and i thank the fire board for Finally getting to that point. All right, uh, next we have Historical Commission. Yes, hi, thank you. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think we did our um, uh, liaison updates at the February meeting, so I'm going to do both January and February, oh, okay. and I'm making it up as I go because I know I forgot to prepare something. <laughs> We met on January 18th. <laughs> uh, had eight of our nine members were there. Uh, we did our annual uh, reorganization, our new leadership. Uh, Paul Stevens uh, is uh, our chair. John Coughlin is our vice chair. Uh, I'm, I've stayed on as secretary. And Donna DePrinzio, right over here, is Hi, the Donna. new treasurer. Well, <laughs> yay. Um, our February 15th meeting, all nine members were present and four guests. I just want to say we had six members this time last year. Um, we, what do we do? What do we do? Um, 
there is a short presentation on PA share, just so everyone had a fuller understanding of how we can actually up, upload um, resources for the National Register through it. Um, we went over our 2023 priorities. Uh, we had reports from all of our subcommittees. And we spent a lot of time talking about the walking tour that Jane mentioned. Yeah. You know, we are so humbled Being nice. that uh, we've been chosen for this. It's it's Chester County Planning Commission, their his, the, the Historical uh, Preservation <laughs> Department, and <coughs> Chester County Historical Preservation Network um, who sponsor <clears throat> this. We're one of eight, I think, uh, in Chester County that were chosen. Uh, we're putting together a spring day of service where we will go out and uh, do all the repairs to the ground and stuff to give our public works people a break. Um, we also talked about doing as much as possible to help park parks and recs Rec, because they have been so generous with their time with us and uh, we want to make sure we're helping them because so many of our projects can be intertwined. Um, our 2022 annual report will be <coughs> delivered to the Board of Commissioners prior to the their March 23rd meeting. Um, it's complete, it just has, needs to be approved at our next meeting. <coughs> Saturday, March 18th is the Chester County Historical Preservation Network annual luncheon. I am lucky to uh, be representing the Historical Commission and will be providing an update on uh, everything we've done since we last saw them at the dinner. I think that was in June or July last year. Uh, our next meeting is next Wednesday, March 15th at 7 <coughs> p.m., both live here and on Zoom. Our guest speaker will be the president of the Chester County Historic Preservation Network, Jim Buxella. And Jim was largely responsible for leading the charge for Bondsville Mill Park. Um, he's East Brandywine. Uh, we're so excited hmm. to meet with him. Uh, hmm. I, I think that's it. A lot. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I will you. remind you. Okay, you better come in person. Oh, okay. Bring your car. <laughs> All right, okay. got it. All right, um, and, and I just want to make one comment: <laughs> the fact that the boards are working together. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that is incredible. That, that's what it's all about. I, and if there's a board that wants to work with the sewer department, uh, I, I'd be more than happy. Gosh. I, anything you think uh, we could do. Uh, Pleasure. You know, municipal authority board. Hey, we're there for you guys. So, oh, remember dig that. Deep. Keep, keep <laughs> that in mind. With some idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm trying, Kristen. I'm trying. So, all right. Slogging through ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we are just Bless flowing. Bless you. <laughs> flowing with ideas. All right. We do. We do have Lincoln Highway here. I, I know Josh usually leads that, so I'm not sure if there was enough. Might yeah, we're know. still deep in zoning, and um, <clears throat> so probably not going to be ready to resurrect that for a couple more months. But we are entertaining ideas about how to restart it and do it in a way that truly benefits the small businesses, rather than uh, you know, like your average chamber of commerce yeah. has become more of a networking group and not a doing group anymore and i've spoken to some of the small business owners who are investing in the township who would like to be involved in in a new entity that will lead to things getting better i like that <laughs> i have a few words regarding the golf course and uh wanted to say that our last meeting was February 27th. Mm. Uh, it was a great meeting. We thanked Chris for everything that he's done. He was there for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, 
all that all the work that he's done for the course the uh, outside we're expecting new carts with within a couple months may or june uh, we have a lot of new people for <clears throat> membership they've done a lot with that clothing food a lot of things have changed so get on over to the golf course <coughs> they're hiring new people for inside the store and also on the course and we just want to say again thanks chris for a great job you left the course in the black thank yeah. you again All right thank you thank you <clears throat> Lorraine. You're welcome. All right. Uh, moving on to additional business. Uh, Kristen, we have a favor roll, no uh, community association discussion. Uh, yes. Is there somebody here from Beaver Run Knoll? Oh, yay. All right. Hiding behind the podium. Please. Come <laughs> How are you this evening? Good evening. I'm Steve Parsons. Welcome. Oh, hi. A 27 year resident town township. I live, live in Beaver Run Knoll. And uh, we need a sidewalk. Now, let me give you a little background on this. Uh, we have that stretch of Geo Carlson that starts at the Edges Mill of where the woods are, where Beaver Creek is, mm -hmm. runs out to Lloyd Avenue. And along that stretch, I would guesstimate we probably have about a thousand residents. Mm -hmm. uh, but probably the biggest chunk is uh, Beaver Run Knoll. I'm, I'm one of the uh, uh, board members of our community association. And uh, uh, just by way of background, uh, we currently have, I, I would guesstimate about a half a mile of sidewalk on the north side of Geo Carlson. It starts at Edges Mill and ends at the end of our development. And uh, <coughs> probably about seven years ago, we uh, saw a need to connect our two courts, that is Devon Court and Lancaster Court with a sidewalk because we have people walking in the street. So we came to Count Township and we asked for help. We didn't get any money from you, but we did get a construction permit. So Beaver Run Knoll, our little community association, spent uh, $27,000 of our money and we built 640 feet of sidewalk that runs parallel to Geo Carlson. So that's about, that's the background on it. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the problem is, as we see it, we have a continuous stream of people from all the communities that, along this little stretch of road that are walking out in Geo Carlson. So specifically, what we would like Town Township to consider to investigate is extending that sidewalk from the edge of our development out as far as you can go, hopefully out to Lloyd Avenue. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. Last night, <clears throat> uh, I happened to be on the road, and uh, I was going, obviously going east out of the development on Geo Carlson, and there were six people walking in the street, including a young couple pushing a baby carriage out in, <laughs> out in Geo Carlson. So that's the situation that we're in right now. Uh, you know, we, we would uh, desperately plead with Count Township to consider constructing a sidewalk. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. You know, the sidewalk that we built, 640 feet, uh -huh. gets continuous use by all of the development, by all of the people in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We have people that come that'll jog from the single home development down at Edges Mill Road all the way up to the end of our development just because there's a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So that's basically what we need. It's a nice flat stretch of land uh, my recollection uh, when we did the sidewalk construction was that Count Township has a 25-foot easement that runs alongside Geo Carlson. So basically, you know, you let's say you own the land or you have the right to construct a, uh, a sidewalk. And that's about it. How, how long of a length are we think, yeah, thinking? I, I mean, would you, guess you did 650 I, I, feet? And how much? I knew 40. somebody was going to ask me that. I mean, <laughs> I'm just, just trying to picture I, it in I our head. I would guess that it's at least 
a half a mile or maybe longer you know and well you know if, if you want mm -hmm. you're more than welcome to come over I'll, I'll meet you and and you know we'll show you where our sidewalk ends which is the end of our development mm -hmm. that's the stretch stretch that we put in and it just kind of winds up there you know geo carlson does like an s curve mm -hmm. out to lloyd avenue right uh, so uh, it's it's a, it's a good half plus mile maybe more out to the end the other interesting thing it's a, a, a new development from the seven years ago when we put our sidewalk in is that we've got uh, two very busy food businesses that is the royal farms and the taco bell mm -hmm. out at the intersection mm -hmm. uh, and believe it or not i've seen people walk out for you know either for exercise or lack of transportation mm -hmm. but i've actually seen people walk out to that intersection to go over uh, of around that. lloyd yeah all the way mm -hmm. to the intersection and wow. that is wild. that's dangerous. That's wildly that's dangerous scary. yeah and that's i crazy. think you were just out there the other day mm -hmm. weren't you yep. saw all kind of traffic yeah. that yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to back out of uh somebody's you know driveway there Can't do it. yeah the traffic yeah. is so that's about it you know we'd like you to uh, take a look at it consider it it's a public <clears throat> safety issue as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. you know we have uh, a lot of traffic uh, kids riding uh, bikes or walking, people walking their dogs. And when they get to the end of our development, which is the end of the sidewalk, they're basically out in Geo Carlson. That's about it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, and I, I see Adam behind you there shaking his head yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sidewalks so, have we, been. We put a uh, full little notice in our next door neighbor uh, website that we had, I guess back in December, January. We got overwhelming response yeah everybody that lives along this stretch thought it was a great idea so and you know we're all residents so here i'll read you my card okay and then uh, you know, i guess for the couple uh, this would be our little community association mm -hmm. oh, no. thank you sir i'll swap you thank you parson in touch with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. visit. Thank you so much. Yeah, Paul and I will so, come you know, out. If you have any comments yeah. or questions, if you want to meet, uh, I, I guess I'm the, the point man. Give me a call, and uh, we'll see what we can develop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Thank bringing you. that to our attention. I think Adam would Mr. like to Mullen, add. Uh, as a resident of Beaver Run Knoll, I can attest to what he's saying. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, the the traffic out on Geo Carlson. There are several people walking every day here, and they get hit. Uh, a lot of people do not move out of the way, so they're walking down. Mm. Um, the one problem though is that at one point between the two streets on the north side, there will be a bridge that needs to be put in, as there is a creek. So that is something that the board may want. But I do think not only the traffic on the sidewalk and people walking out to uh, 322 oh, yeah. and Lloyd Avenue, that yeah, that is something mm -hmm. that you know, if you can put that into the long term plan and the short term to have it something on the plan, it'd be a good thing. I've seen the plan, it's been approved. Okay. I'll send us the attempt to get that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you know, uh, just stand in front of the mic if, if you could just stand in front of the mic yeah we do have people in oh, zoom oh, world they like to hear i'm sorry the only break in that nice flat stretch of uh, road that goes out to lloyd avenue is the creek yeah. and uh, i know bridges are expensive so uh, you know what one fix would be to simply have a a ramp that goes down to geo carlson the, the, the stretch in the creek is probably what about 20 feet maybe 25 so you know worst case just put a little sign up there at, mm -hmm. at that break on either side and say don't walk in the creek 
Right. Well, thank you, Stephen, Adam. Thank appreciate you, sir. it. Uh, we won't promise yeah. anything, but definitely take a look at this and see what uh, what we can do. So one thing to keep in consideration is that the Beaver Creek Trail, mm -hmm. if implemented, would create a trail system directly behind Beaver Run Knoll. So people then would have accessibility to a trail nowhere near a road where they could be at any type of safety hazard. Oh, okay. Oh, so if you would look on our website and just in our website research in the search bar, um, Beaver Creek Trail, there's an mm -hmm. entire trail study that's being completed and we are trying to, we actually have the first phase being engineered that we received a grant to do engineering for um, that would connect mm -hmm. Lloyd Avenue down to the municipal building. Yeah, and, and, and it runs yeah. directly behind Beaver Run Knoll. Right. So it would be a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, if you, here I could show you here on my computer. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Mm -hmm. That's where you are. This would be yeah. near the proposed trail. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. What's the timing on that? Years. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very, very expensive. It's, it's, so it will, it's not coming tomorrow. But we keep applying for grants and are working on the engineering. Yeah. Oh, please not. Well, again, thanks for your consideration. And I'd like to hear from you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of the night. Thanks for coming out. <clears throat> All right. Next on the agenda public comment. Uh, I do not see any hands raised here. In the township building, anybody uh, in Zoom world? There's a Brian. Yes, Brian, just state your name and address. Uh, Brian, and I'm over on uh, 51 South 16th Avenue. Okay. Yes. And I had a, a comment and concern about a, an ongoing. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, sorry, I was getting a lot of feedback for some reason. A little bit, yeah. You still uh, there? Yeah. Um, North Callan Road, um, the one area going between um, Kings Highway and coming down the hill um, towards Business 30, uh, that little S area, I know it gets washed out a lot, but it is really hard to see um, the paint on the lines. Like during the daytime, you can see it a little bit when there's like perfect weather conditions, but anytime it's dark or if it's raining, it's like kind of like a, a game of guess where the road is. I didn't know if there was any um, plan on getting fresh paint out there on the road. So Brian, that is actually a PennDOT road. What I can do is I can put a request into PennDOT. Um, but what I would suggest is calling, it, it helps with PennDOT because they do have a performance management system if they get multiple calls. If you would call 1-800-FIX-ROADS and put that request in, um, but I will also do that on your behalf. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, and if you have other neighbors, uh, have them give a call. The, the more the merrier. Yes. But, uh, but yeah, coming down that uh, windy road, I, I agree with Brian. Using the bumper car or the, the uh, what is it? The, the guardrail. The guardrail, you, using that to guide yeah. yourself is it's, not the correct yeah. way to do it. Maybe not. So thank you, Brian. Uh, any other hands raised? Public comment? Not at this time. All right. All right. Entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. We, we I oh. wanted a request for an executive session for legal and real estate matters. Oh, okay. Thank you. All righty. All right. No other questions, comments. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved second. and second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you.